can get started. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here this morning. I am Jim Falvo, and uh, I am with the College of Pharmacy. I started working in uh, July of last year. I have taught uh, full time as a university professor for eight years at various institutions, among them uh, University of Nebraska. And uh, I decided to move down here because I thought that uh, I needed to go to a school that could actually win some football games. So <laughs> that's the reason I'm in. Oklahoma, but seriously, I, I have uh, had a passion for teaching and learning most of my uh, professional life, and as well as when I was a student, I was always curious about, uh, is there some better way to do things? So it's not surprising then that uh, my dissertation focused on faculty concerns, and uh, when we say concerns, we're talking about the, the thoughts and feelings and so forth uh, that people have any time they're faced with change, dealing with an innovation. And I, I think if you think about your life, things that, uh, that you're involved in, something new comes along, you, you know, you're, you're very much at a feeling level concerned about it, and we're going to get into some of that here today. I appreciate the fact that uh, th those of you who showed up juggled your schedule to be here, and <laughs> speaking of juggling, uh, I want to start off with just a simple learning exercise, and I want to see what your learning styles are. Let's assume, and I'm not going to ask for volunteers here in Tulsa, so I'm not going to embarrass anybody, and of course you're off the hook uh, in Oklahoma City and uh, those watching later. But if I were to ask you to juggle, uh, let me just ask anybody, how would, how would you prefer to be taught? Tulsa or Oklahoma City? Just go ahead and uh, punch your button and, and the camera will swing to you. What's your preferred way of being taught how to, how to uh, juggle? Doug? <laughs> Uh, probably prefer some kind of demonstration by someone who knows how to do it and then just practice myself. Okay. Kim, might as well hear from everybody. I would agree. I'd do, be the same way exactly. I'd like to see and then and then do. Good. Okay, okay thank you. How about in uh, Oklahoma City? Okay, mine is not. What's, what would be your preferred way of learning how to juggle? Juggle? Oh. Sorry. I'd agree for juggling that it would be necessary to see how it's done first because there's a lot of nuances that wouldn't be covered in words, things that you may not even be aware of. There is a list of how-tos, how to juggle. And I suppose if one read that and followed those directions, uh, one would be able to at least attempt to juggle. And some might prefer that learning style, so we can't say that that's necessarily wrong. It might be good for some people. Um, here's an example. What's that? Actually, actually, it's hard to read. Thank you for making that comment because that would be another another thing that would be wrong with that graphic. For this kind of a distance learning class, that would be very hard to read. The font is small. Even I believe I have my uh, text size on the largest. Yes, I do. Um, in this particular uh, learning aid here. We have some pictures and words mixed together, and some might prefer that. It might make it a little bit easier to visualize how to juggle three balls. Again, um, some words and pictures fit some learning styles. Now, most of you said that you would like someone to demonstrate. Well, short of doing that, the next best thing might be to access uh, an animation such as uh, Michelle had mentioned the other day. Uh, this is not done through PowerPoint. It's, it's some kind of a uh, Java applet, but it's, uh, it shows how to take, how to start with one ball and then move to two and then to three. You're traveling to another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Why am I playing the Twilight Zone theme? Well, many of us in this room are old enough to have actually been around when the Twilight Zone first started. Um, for me, as a young person watching Rod Serling's Twilight Zone, it, uh, it, it got the wheels turning in my brain. And it made me think, and I think that was an important part of my development. Uh, there's a lot of TV shows that don't make you think, but The Twilight Zone certainly did. If you want a, an example of that, let me play this piece for you here. 
when I woke up this morning, I... Well, I didn't exactly wake up. I just... I just found myself out on that road, walking. Amnesia. Isn't that what they call it? Well, that must be what I got, because I just don't remember a thing. I can't seem to find anybody to ask. You're the first person I've seen. Look, I really don't want you to be frightened or anything, but I was wondering if there's a doctor or... There's many good Twilight Zone episodes, but... Um... But that particular one uh, uh, struck me as, as being the uh, most important show. Well, so what? So why am I showing you the, the Twilight Zone? Well, you know, many of us have, uh, have been involved in video from home movies back in the days before camcorders. I'll just show you a clip. Uh, oops. Uh, this is a, a clip that uh, my sister shot back in the mid-60s, and that's me as a, as a young high school person who was getting interested in in video at the time, um, I'm standing on the Mount Washington in the city of Pittsburgh, my hometown, and uh, that's just a shot of, of Pittsburgh if you haven't seen it. But th the reason I play that, that piece is because a lot of us have that common thread of having shot movies, and so we're, we're familiar with, with video to some extent, even though it might have been filmed back in the old days. Most of us have either shot with a camcorder, been shot by a camcorder, or at least own a camcorder. And, and like I said, uh, we have a lot of common experiences visually. At the trademark. It, it appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. I'm in behind the motorcade. Now you follow them. It looks as though they're going to park in the hospital. Okay, I think we all remember uh, where we were and what we were doing on that day, uh, November 22nd, 1963. And uh, several months later, we all had another common experience. Welcome. Who do I sit by? Well, the, the, that most handsome person in the in the audience, I would. <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of a pinhead, but. You won't talk much. Oh, let me let me show who just walked oh. in here. Um, get the technology working. Okay. Oh. Oops, wrong way. Wrong way. There we go. There we go. This is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you all know everybody hey. here, Nancy. Yes, I do. I do. I do. Okay. Which I know our guests. Yes, those are those are people I can zoom in on, and they're not going to get uncomfortable. So. 